Hey everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globe Trotting. If you're planning an all inclusive beach vacation down to Mexico or the Caribbean, there are so many resorts to choose from and it can be completely overwhelming. I know when I was planning my trip to Mexico, I spent so much time trying to figure out where I wanted to stay since I wanted the trip to be perfect. If you look online, every resort is going to have gorgeous professional pictures and a huge list of things that they include and all sorts of other information, but honestly, it was hard to tell whether one resort would be better than another. After looking at dozens of resorts and setting a budget and looking at all the different amenities and researching prices and reading way too many reviews, I finally made up my mind and picked where I wanted to stay. I ended up going to the Barcelo Maya Grand Resort in the Riviera Maya, Mexico. In this video, I'll show you around the resort so you can see what it's like from someone who's actually staying there, and hopefully it'll give you more information about the resort than you'd get from browsing a hotel website. I'll say right up front that I had an amazing time here, but what I want in a resort may be different from what you want, so hopefully this video gives you enough information to see if it's the right place for your vacation. To start off, the Barcelo Maya is huge. It's actually six different hotels that are all part of one mega resort. Since it's so big, this guide is going to be broken down into a few different parts. In this first part, I'll start by talking about where it is and how to get there. After that, I'll tell you about the different hotels on the resort, show you around their lobbies and hotel buildings, talk about their themes, and take you on a tour of my room. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. In the other parts, I'll show you all of the huge pools you can swim in, talk about all of the activities the hotels have, and walk along the private beach that's over a mile long. Plus, it's an all-inclusive resort, so I'll show you all of the bars and restaurants and nightlife that the resort has. There are so many different buffets, a la carte restaurants, beach grills, swim up bars, and places to grab a drink that it can be tough keeping track of them all. The resort has a mixture of free activities and ones that cost extra, so I'll show you those and give you a better idea of how you'll be able to keep yourself entertained. The resort is great, but you may want to get out and explore, so I'll talk about some of the great options for getting off resort and exploring the Yucatan Peninsula. If you're interested in any of those things, check out the video description for links to those videos. Okay, so let's start off with the basics. How do you get to the Barcelo Maya? Most people are going to fly there, and the nearest airport is the Cancun International Airport. The airport can be pretty chaotic. As soon as I walked out of the baggage claim area, there was a swarm of people trying to sell me timeshares and get me to book a taxi and just generally trying to get my attention. If your vacation package didn't include transportation, I recommend pre-booking a private shuttle to take you to the resort. The company I used had a sign with our name on it and quickly took us through all of the crowds to our van. It's actually a pretty long drive to the resort, 80 kilometers or 50 miles, and takes about an hour. As you drive south towards the Barcelo Maya, you enter the Riviera Maya region and the highway down there is pretty much resort after resort after resort. If there's waterfront land, chances are there's a resort there. But before long, you'll be able to look out your window and see the big Barcelo sign coming into view. As I said, this is a huge resort. It's made up of six hotels, but you aren't limited to only using your own hotel. Depending on which hotel you're in, you get to use the pools and beach and restaurants and amenities from a bunch of the other ones. To start off, there are four entry-level hotels. The Barcelo Maya Tropical, Barcelo Maya Colonial, Barcelo Maya Carib, and Barcelo Maya Beach. If you stay at one of those four, you also have access to the other three. More importantly, that means you can use their buffets and bars and restaurants and any of the other fun stuff they have. Chances are, if you're coming to the Barcelo Maya, you'll probably be staying at one of these four hotels. They make up a huge chunk of the resort, and they're usually the most affordable ones to stay at. The next hotel is the higher-end Barcelo Maya Palace. It's up at the northern end of the resort, closest to the tropical. If you stay here, you get to use everything at the palace, plus everything at the other four hotels. 
The look and design of the palace is very similar to the other four hotels with a colorful Mayan Riviera vibe. The last hotel is the extra high-end Barcelo Maya Riviera at the southern end of the property. It's the newest hotel on the resort and it's completely adults only. If you stay here, you have full access to every hotel on the resort. One thing you'll notice is that the design is completely different from the other five hotels. It's got a bigger, modern look to it, much more like a traditional hotel building. Personally, I like the looks and designs of the other hotels a lot more. But from what I've read, the hotel itself has some really nice restaurants and amenities. If you're looking for detailed information about the palace or the Riviera, unfortunately there won't be much of that in my videos. When I was there, I stayed at the Colonial, so my videos are going to focus almost entirely on what to expect from the four entry-level hotels. I only want to talk about things I actually got to see and experience myself, so that's why I'll be showing things from the Tropical, Colonial, Carib, and Beach. But since most people stay at one of those four hotels, and guests from the Palace and Riviera can use all of their restaurants and amenities, this video should be pretty useful for most people staying here. If I'm lucky, sometime maybe I'll get to come back to the Barcelo Maya and stay at the Palace or Riviera so I can experience them for myself. After you pull into the resort, your first stop is going to be at one of the hotel lobbies. The outside of the tropical hotel is a little unassuming, with a small fountain out front, a blocky design, and no signs telling you what building you're at. But once you walk inside, you'll see the big open air lobby with huge chandeliers and fans hanging from the ceiling. I found the lobby colors were very subdued. The colors and design really reminded me of a beach, especially with the stone statue standing in front of a nice central fountain. The check-in desk is similar, with a huge stone-carved mural on the wall showing a pretty elaborate Mayan-themed scene. That first fountain I showed you is nice, but they have a huge fountain pool that's probably bigger than swimming pools at some of the other hotels I've stayed at. That's a theme you're going to notice here, Everything at the Barcelo Maya is big and grand and impressive. If you paid to upgrade to premium, all of these hotels have special premium level check-ins and lounges in their lobbies. The next hotel is at the Colonial. Like Tropical, there's a fountain out front and no obvious signs. But you can't miss this hotel since there's a giant Mexican flag out front flapping in the breeze. This one seemed more like a beachfront resort to me, with its thatched roofs and big arched entryways. Once you walk inside, you definitely notice a hacienda style to the lobby, like you're entering into an old money Mexican estate. The floors are so polished you can see your reflection in them. And there's a nice central fountain in an uncovered area in the middle, and it really gets lit up by the sunshine. Just like Tropical, the check-in desk has a big, stone-carved Mayan mural behind it. And, as you'll see in all of these lobbies, its own huge fountain pool. I really love the open-air concept with the thatched roofs providing a little bit of cover. There aren't any doors, so you're never far from the sunshine and fresh air. If you forgot anything at home, nearly every hotel has its own gift shop in the lobby. They had clothes and souvenirs and beach stuff and hot sauces and tequilas and a bunch of other things. The outside of the crib lobby is a little more exciting than the last two, with a colorful Mayan statue in the center of the front fountain. And it's obvious which hotel you're at since they have the name proudly displayed on the front. As soon as you walk in, there's some Mayan statues holding flags lining the entryway as you come in. The crib's check-in desk keeps up with the Mayan mural theme, but instead of carved stone, it's a big, colorful painting. And then towards the back, there's other statues that look like performers with elaborate costumes on. The costumes remind me of the wings and crest of feathers that a bird would have. They even have a bench designed to look like the costumes. The whole lobby seems to have a Mayan ceremony theme, with the flag bearers welcoming you towards the performance at the back. And, you guessed it, there's a huge fountain in this lobby too. I found the opening to the fountain was so bright from the sunshine that it actually made the lobby feel dark compared to tropical or colonial. The last lobby I'll show you is the Beach Hotel. This one is very similar to Carib, with a colorful Mayan statue in the fountain and the hotel name in big letters on the front entrance. The statue looks like it's giving or receiving some sort of offering. 
beach also has some flag bearers welcoming you into the lobby. These ones aren't nearly as realistic as the ones in Karib. They're more artistic and covered with bright, colorful tiles. Towards the back, there are some big, imposing animals looking down at you. I'm not sure if they're gods or spirits or something else, but you won't be able to miss them. The check-in desk has another colorful painted mural behind it. This one looks like people lined up to see their leaders. Just like in the mural, there are even some trumpeters down towards the end of the hall. You probably noticed that Beach and Karib both had really strong Mayan themes in their lobbies. I found the Beach lobby was almost like a Mayan religious ceremony taking place. And yet another huge fountain pool. You can't walk very far without finding a fountain at the Barcelo Maya. This one had some flamingo statues in it, giving it more of the look and feeling of a lake. Another thing you'll find in every lobby or desks where you can book tours in case you're interested in leaving the resort. So those are the hotel lobbies. But honestly, other than checking in and maybe stopping by one of the lobby bars, you probably won't be spending too much time in them. After checking in, your next stop is probably going to be to your room in one of the hotel buildings. Tropical has two buildings, Veracruz and Yucatan, named after the Mexican states. The first thing you'll probably notice is that there are angels everywhere here. All along the hallways, they have these little gardens with paths leading up to the angels and plants and trees surrounding the statues. There aren't any roofs above the gardens, so it lets in a lot of light and makes it look really natural. I found the buildings really fit in well with what I was expecting from a Mayan Riviera hotel. They blended in really nicely with the palm trees and vegetation, so it didn't feel like you were at a huge hotel. Each building also has a central fountain, and they look like a bunch of pots with water pouring out of them. For all of the hotels I'm going to show you, the hotel buildings are laid out sort of like fingers that stretch from the lobby to the pool area. So you may end up in a room that's close to the pools, or one that's close to the lobby and restaurants, or one that's pretty much right in the middle. Depending on what's important to you, it doesn't hurt to request a specific area when you check in. Next are the buildings over at the Barcelo Maya Colonial. Keeping up with the Mexican state theme, rooms are split between the Guanajuato building and the Jalisco building. If you're anything like me, when you look at these clips, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between these buildings and the ones I showed you before at Tropical. The colors and layouts are very similar, and you can see there are more angels and gardens everywhere you go. If you look very closely, you'll see that the color schemes change a little bit and there are different angels in every garden, but it's really hard to tell them apart. So, if you've been spending all day sipping drinks by the pool, make sure you go into the right building so you don't get lost. I figured out pretty quickly what the entrance to my building from the lobby and the pool looked like, and I always managed to find my way home. The main difference that I noticed between the tropical and colonial buildings was their central fountains. In Colonial, they were more of a traditional multi-level cascading type of fountain. I think the central gardens were my favorite feature. They're so nice to see when you leave your room. If you upgrade to a premium room in any of the hotels, those rooms are always closest to the pools and beach and give you an oceanfront view from your balcony. Once we move over to the Carib buildings, we switch from an angel theme to a Mayan theme. The two buildings here, Sayil and Labna, are named after Mayan ruins from the Yucatan Peninsula. They have big, colorful Mayan statues greeting you as soon as you walk into the buildings. At the very least, it makes it easy to figure out what side of the resort you're on. If you see angels, you're in tropical or colonial. If you see Mayan statues, you're in Carib or beach. The statues fit in really well with the Carib's lobby, since if you remember, it has a strong Mayan theme too. It's not just the statues, they have other Mayan decorations like pyramid covers over the lights. And even the trash cans are made to look old and weathered, with detailed carvings on every side of them. I really liked all of the little details that they incorporated into this hotel. The gardens here aren't quite as elaborate as tropical or colonial, but it's still nice to have a little green in the hotel hallways. I think the reason the gardens aren't as fancy is because the roof isn't completely open above. It's covered on the top with little openings on the sides, so it doesn't let in nearly as much light. The premium rooms in the Carib have some really unique features that set them apart from the other hotels. The ground level premium rooms are all swim out. 
I didn't see many people actually using them, but they seem like a pretty cool feature. Even if you stay at a regular room in one of the hotels, the garden view they give you is still pretty nice with a jungle outside and a nice spacing between the buildings. Last but not least is the beach hotel. Unlike the other hotels that all had two buildings each, this one has three, Ushmal, Koba, and Tulum. Just like Karib, these are named after Mayan ruins from nearby on the Yucatan Peninsula. One of the things I liked about these buildings is that they had pictures of what the actual ruins look like. Especially if you've never been to this part of Mexico before, you may not know what these places are, so the pictures are a nice touch. Just like it was pretty hard to tell the tropical and colonial buildings apart, the same goes for Carib and Beach. More Mayan statues everywhere you walk, more gardens in the middle of every hallway, and more Mayan-themed designs all over the place. So, if you like one of them, you'll probably like the others. The premium rooms here don't have any swim-out pools, but they do have hot tubs on the balcony if you want to relax in your room. But, no matter which hotel you're staying at, or the building you're in, they all lead out to the beautiful pools and beach. Now that I've shown you the lobbies and hotel buildings, I'll take you inside my room. I stayed at the Colonial Hotel and the Wanawato building, but most of the rooms at the resort should be pretty similar. The room I was in was a superior room, which is a standard run of house room at the resort. If you book a vacation package or just a generic room, this will probably be one of the ones you'll get since most of the rooms are this type. Inside was nice and clean, nothing too fancy, but pretty much exactly what I was expecting. Other than coming back to my room to change or to sleep at the end of the day, I didn't really spend too much time here, so this room was perfect. Same thing with the bathrooms, nice and clean, perfect for cleaning up after a long day out at the beach. Because the resort's surrounded by tropical jungle, be prepared that it can get incredibly humid, even with the air conditioning full blast in the rooms. So if you have any stuff in your room with soft surfaces, like backpacks and suitcases, keep an eye on it and wipe it down so you don't end up with mold. As a little bonus, they had a bottle of Mayan liqueur waiting for me in my room when I got there, which I thought was really nice of them. And because this is an all-inclusive resort, every room has its own fully stocked minibar. Inside there was beer and soda and juice and water and nuts, and every day the staff comes to restock them for you. Just like pretty much every resort, the rooms have a safe in the closet if you want to lock up your valuables. My room was on the first floor, so I had a nice little walkout patio with a garden view. Great to enjoy the fresh air with a drink at the end of the day. I really liked the plants and trees everywhere. It was like I was walking out of my room into the Mayan jungle. And even though I was in the middle of a huge resort, I could barely see any of the other buildings. My one problem with the room was that the Wi-Fi was terrible. You have to pay extra for Wi-Fi, but in my room and lots of places around the resort it barely worked, which was a big letdown. So that's it for the first part of my Barcelo Maya Grand Guide. I've shown you where it is, what the different hotels look like, and taken you on a tour of my room, but I've really only just scratched the surface. Do you see what I mean when I say how huge this resort is? In the next video, I'm going to show you around the pool areas, the resort's incredible long beaches, and all of the amazing pool and beach activities that you can do. Plus, in the other videos, I'm going to show you the restaurants and bars, the nightlife options, the resort activities you can do to keep yourself entertained, and some of the day trips you can take if you want to get off the resort. Check out the video description for links to all of those parts. If you have any questions about the Barcelo Maya Grand or my experience, ask me in the comments. And while you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. On Instagram, I'm Firsthand Globe Trotting. On Twitter, I'm Firsthand Globe. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some firsthand globe trotting of your own.